one. We're going to get to the Fighter Robotics Network. I'm Al Hossi with EJS Team 15972. Ethno Z from Romania. They are currently ranked number one in the world by OPR, ranked number one in the world by average score, over 400 points of mass, have the world record, the second world record, and the uh, last record. of least, last but not least, are first in the Edison division with a record of 9 and 1 going into playoffs and a live selection. They are absolutely incredible. Can't wait to jump into them on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Judica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and front runners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Okay guys, so lots of different robot designs we've seen this year. I think what sticks out to be the most about yours is the side depositing on the turret with the intake. Many people were concerned with the horizontal extension limits this year, but obviously that didn't stop you guys. Why were you so, uh, like why were you so determined to implement this design? Uh, at first we started by doing an active uh, intake. Last year we saw how good it can be in tele-op and voting auto, but um, after doing a few tests and part Participating at our, our first scrimmage, uh, we saw that uh, a closed system has a really high accuracy if you have a good detection and um, it can be extremely fast because the intake is nearly instant. So that's why we uh, uh, decided to develop this uh, variant of our intake. And also we saw uh, that uh, it's uh, really fast if we can deposit at the same time as we collect from the field wall. Yeah, now I'm talking about the turret a little bit because your turret gets a lot of action. What exactly are you using for that turret mechanism? It looks very, very light but still robust, so I want to get a good look at it. Uh, one of our main goals for this turret was to be extremely compact and lightweight so we, we can uh, extend really fast. And also we wanted to be able to transfer uh, from under the low chamber. So that's why even if we have a smaller range, we can still uh, reach a big uh, area on the field. And uh, also it's uh, really fast because of its lightness and compactness. So your servo that's pivoting is actually mounted to the arm and then the, the hub is what's fixed to the chassis, is that correct? Yes, okay. we did this because we wanted to have the turret as low as possible to be able to move it under the load chamber. And this is the uh, best way that we find out uh, on how to make it really compact. Awesome, yeah. Now jumping into a little bit of uh, programming and vision with this. I see your line wire is mounted right here. It seems like very, very compact and just like the whole arm is so small. Uh, how are you using that line wire? Is it only in autonomous, also in tally up? What does it do? Yeah, so uh, we found this spot on the arm to mount to the line because uh, we thought it was a great position. We use it uh, only in autonomous period. We use neural networks uh, for detecting the samples. And uh, during the autonomous period, after we detect the samples, we select the closest one and do some trigonometry and inverse kinematics to send the intake directly above the sample. Okay, yeah. Now jumping into your extension, it's also very, very quickly, I think I'm seeing it's another one of the extensions that's geared, or not geared, strung only on one side of the robot. How many motors and why that single side stringing? So as you can see here, this uh, is, our, is our gearbox uh, assembly. I'll get into that later. But uh, this motor along with uh, this this uh, spool is the only thing that's actioning the extension. So basically we found out that uh, ex for the extension, for the uh, horizontal extension, it's way more easier and way more reliable to have string only on one side. Uh, this helps out on not only string routing, but also efficiency and uh, reliability. Mm -hmm. Now, jumping into your transfer, your depositor is just super, super awesome. Walk me through the transfer process first. If we can show it, that's even better. Uh, yes, for sure. So uh, our transfer is a flow to flow transfer. Uh, I'm go first going to show it uh, by hand and then I'll make it uh, in, uh, using the tele So the claw grabs the sample. With the color sensor, it detects if uh, uh, the catch was successful or not. Then, because we don't have a pitch on our intake, we twist the turret, lower the outic arm, and then uh, come and transfer. And uh, the way that it's uh, so reliable, it's because uh, before, right before we transfer between uh, each uh, claw, uh, we have a moment where we drop, the, we open the claw a little bit, 
so we drop the sample. And the outtake arm is uh, always a little bit lower than the intake arm, uh, which uh, ensures us that the transfer is uh, always at the same spot. Awesome, yeah, and can we see it, uh, you know, yeah, running with all the driver automations and, and everything like that. As far as automations go, is the entire transfer process automated as soon as you pick up a sample, or do you have to activate it once you, is the, does the driver activate after the sample has been picked up? So it's completely automated for uh, right now, I'm gonna show you. Uh, so we, I just extend the intake, like this. Then uh, uh, I'm gonna go grab the sample. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, now I've switched to the sample mode. And by pressing only one button, on uh, the clo clo close button, all of this happens with, uh, completely automatically and using the sensors that are on the robot and uh, a few timers. Okay, yeah, and as far as lifting the deposit, one thing uh, like I've thought about it, I've seen teams have issues with is if they're still driving back and the deposit goes up, then they can be tippy or anything like that. That doesn't seem to be something like you guys have had an issue with. How did you solve it? Uh, I think it's because our lift is pretty light, like the end depositor, uh, it's uh, pretty compact. And also, uh, our chassis is really low to the ground, the ground clearance is uh, really small. And I think that helps us, uh, prevents us from tipping. Uh, we never had issues with tips. Maybe we wobble a little bit, but it's completely fine. Yeah, now talking about the deposit mechanism itself, not a lot of teams have the extension like this this year, especially with the server link, it's super, super cool. Why go with this design? So basically, as you can see here, this linkage. Wait a sec. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, because we wanted to be able to deposit also on the uh, uh, on the specimen side and also on the uh, sample side, uh, we knew we couldn't. Uh, at first, uh, we couldn't uh, have the uh, uh, the slides on the middle of the robot, so we can. Yeah. So uh, we use this uh, linkage. Uh, linkage mechanism that also over -senders. so when it's fully extended you can give it any kind of shock and you want to watch so I guess that's how yeah we go. and as far as like the other degrees of freedom go on your deposit walk me through those I see you have two pivots here did you start with one and then you decided to add the second server or it was just two servos the entire season uh, we started with two uh, servers on the pivot side uh, then at the national uh, playoffs uh, we had uh, some problems with uh, one servo, and we played all the uh, all the matches with only one servo. Oh, right, right. Also, the world record uh, was made with only one servo on uh, the pivot. Uh, then, without extension that um, uh, my teammate uh, talked about it late, uh, before, uh, we had yeah. an additional uh, degree of freedom. Uh, is the pitch uh, helps us a lot uh, on uh, pick up picking up on the wall and also putting on the bar uh, specimens without additional moving, uh, movement from the uh, from the OTEC system and uh, with only uh, our uh, movement on the from the chassis. I see a lot of geometry in your claw that's making the sample and specimen move in a ton of different ways. Walk me through what's going on. So we added this right after nationals when we realized that we, we kind of need to uh, be a lot more uh, distance from the wall because uh, it was it would help us a lot with scoring. So we tried uh, changing the geometry on this claw. So while uh, it was uh, it, 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 when applying force, it basically orients the <laughs> specimen or the sample in this direction. So you use this both for a sample placement. I see you make it go further in the basket, but also for specimen placement. Yes. You use this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You are using this uh, because that's how we save that uh, inches. Uh, and uh, helps us to score even if uh, a sample it's, uh, mm. be, uh, it's uh, between us and the small Yeah, that, that makes a ton of sense. So basically at Nats we had it like so, mm -hmm. and that was like not really perfect. Mm -hmm. And now we have it like so, it's like so, uh, three inches. Like Yeah, yeah. yeah. now last thing I want to talk about on the robot is the climb. The climb works very, very well. It's very fast and from my understanding it's also PTO but it still is very different it's than very different yes so walk me through what you have going on here so uh, this is our gearbox assembly so right on the robot we have two motors that are geared to one another and that in turn are geared to two wheels to uh, gear ratios that are one to one and five to one that basically they both of them both of them both of them spin freely from the from the uh, shaft, <laughs> and this 
is where the clutch comes in and it couples or decouples the, the, the specific gears. So basically, now we're engaged with five, uh, with five to one, so with the torque. And it, as you can see, it's very hard to move and it stays in the place. And if we want to score, we just change to one to one and now we're really fast. <laughs> Cool. And as far as the interfacing mechanism goes, obviously like, I can see issues with alignment. Do you have to do anything in code to make sure the encoder shafts are aligned or no? Uh, yeah. So basically uh, to make sure that we are we engage the gear, when we switch from the speed gear to the torque or uh, uh, the other way, we slip the clutch a little bit in order to be sure that the, uh, the uh, head of the bolts get inside the transmission gear. Awesome. Yeah. And do you have a clutch we can see? Uh, outside oh. the robot? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so this uh, this is basically, basically made from two parts that come uh, bolted to a bearing. And this right here is the is our bushing that those two basically slide onto. And it basically provides that it, the uh, sliding mechanism as well as the coupling mechanism. And it slides from one part to the other. Without that is very cool. Yeah. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is driving. You guys are easily one of the best drivers this season. What do you do driver practice-wise that you think differentiates you from everyone else? Uh, I think we have, uh, compared to most of the other teams, we have a lot of uh, automatizations in our TDOP, but it's uh, mainly done with the sensors that are all already on the robot. So, for example, we don't use the camera, but we use a lot of uh, uh, automated routines, let's say. For example, when I want to pick up a sample, it will automatically close, and all of this is automatic. So for the scoring is no, it is nearly without a button. O only when I want to release, I, I press the reset button, and uh, that's it. And for collecting, is uh, again really simple because uh, after I extend, uh, I only need to press one button to get the element. All of this happens completely automatically, and we have uh, a lot of fail safes. Oh, sorry. So, for example, if I want to collect, but the uh, robot wants, uh, it, it's sure that uh, there is no element inside the claw, it, it will automatically reset to the last position we extend. Yeah, I saw that in your autonomous period last match, just a couple times happened, but then, of course, you got it right after. Well, Techlizzy, thank you guys so, so much. I mean, everyone knew you were going to be an absolute powerhouse coming into Houston. You're ranked first, 9 and 1. We can't wait to see what you do tomorrow. According to Fun Robotics Network, I'm Av Haas, and this is Team 15972 Techlizzy. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Zutica Robotics offers durable, polished, and anodized aluminum channels now available in several different color options to customize your robot at studica.com slash robots. No rough edges and a versatile hole pattern allow for positioning at multiple angles. Teams in the U.S., you can request a free sample, apply for team grants, and register for 25% off at studica.com slash robots.